This is a uh, Tenma, two megahertz uh, function generated with sweep capability. And so when I bought it, and remember this, I bought it for twenty-eight dollars. I think eBay seller had it for forty. I offered him twenty-eight. He accepted to ten dollars shipping. So I think I paid thirty-eight dollars for this. Good and heavy. We'll see what's inside in a minute. Searching around on the web, I found this Tenma four page. You know, it's got a front and back panel, some dimensions, a little bit of an explanation of what the knobs are and what kind of signals it generates. I'm not even sure what this is. Uh, oh, uh, conversion from 220 to, to uh, 120. Specifications. And that's all they have, just specifications. Now Tanma does make, in some cases, very complete manuals, but not in this case. I did find out it was a apparently equivalent to this ECG 3230 and that may be the a manufacturer of it. Oriental Tech Development Limited Hong Kong. They actually only offer this. The other two pages are on two or three different function generators. I did find this document for the Tenma and it's published by a uh, probably a professor in a laboratory environment, an educational institution, and he's taking color pictures and gave the students uh, three pages of instructions for operation. Then I hit gold at a German site, and I don't read German, I found that they claim it's equal to a Kenwood Function Generator FG273. Kenwood provides fifteen or more pages. On the last page is the PCB board layout. And actually that's two pages combined into one eight and a half by eleven. And I'll have links to all four of these documents. The Kenwood document is just what you would expect from Kenwood. Detailed specifications, adjustments, and the equipment needed to align the thing. And instructions for calibration and alignment or adjustment. Complete detailed parts list. Three pages long.
a, a, a metalized interior. It appears that the Kenwood manual circuit board and circuit layout is not the same as this. And I have yet to find or calibration instructions that actually match the circuit board that's in here. I do, however, have a four-page Tenma publication. So Tenma lists two ranges for the main output amplitude. There are not two range switches here. What they're referring to is uh, into 50 ohms or into an open circuit. So I've got this a 50 ohm terminator on the oscilloscope. So we're actually we're going to be on this lower voltage range, which is 250 millivolts to 10 volts into 50 ohms. If I were to do it with open circuit, the voltages would practically double. So can I get 10 volts? Well, here I am at 10 kilohertz. It says 11.2 volts right now. So we'll increase the frequency. All right, we'll decrease the frequency. Right now we're at, at 10 cycles per second. It's a thousand cycles per second. ninety nine kilohertz one megahertz and you can see the amplitude didn't vary right now it's still at eleven point two volts this frequency is calibrated from point two to two so I'm sitting right in the middle approximately and it's uh, a one megahertz multiplier and so I guess I'm about halfway between 0.2 and 2. If I go down to 0.2, I uh, lose the frequency counter. Frequency goes down to 240, which is what this is. And I can increase that to 2 megahertz. There we go, 2 megahertz. Now, it should produce, without changing any height, triangular wave, or a... I no longer am using a scope probe, so I can't linearize things with just a coax cable. And we can take it down to, like, Ten hertz. Or we can take it up to a hundred kilohertz. These little glitches were caused by my turning the uh, amplitude knob. So that's a look at the Tenma 725015. So if you've stuck around to the end, give me a thumbs up if you would. Thank you very much.